It's a busy day for this group of friends. They are working hard at baking a cake. One of them is preheating the oven. One is making the batter. One is melting the chocolate. And one is preparing the decorations for the cake. Wow! There's the cake. That's great teamwork. Did you know that different tissues in plants have different functions too? But they work as a team to keep the plant alive. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to Define plant tissue Identify the different types of tissues and Describe the different types of plant tissues. What are tissues? A group of cells that are similar in structure and that work together to achieve a particular function forms a tissue. Plants are stationary and so some of the tissues they have are dead cells which provide mechanical strength. These are the different types of plant tissues. Meristematic and permanent tissues. Look at how this plant is growing month by month. This is due to a special type of tissue called meristematic tissue. These tissues are rapidly dividing tissues. Plant growth occurs only at those points where these tissues are present. The tips of the stem and the root. Meristematic cells are living, cubical and thin-walled. Each cell has a large nucleus. Cells are closely packed with no intercellular spaces. Depending on the region where they are present, meristematic tissues are classified as apical, lateral and intercalary. Apical meristem is present at the apical or growing tips of stems and roots. It increases the length of the plant. Lateral meristem or cambium is present in the radial portion of the stem or root. It increases the girth of the plant. Intercalary meristem occurs at the base of the leaves or at the internodes. It helps to increase the length of the internode. Take a look at what eventually happens to meristematic tissues. Old meristematic cells lose the capacity to divide and transform into permanent tissues. This process of taking up a permanent shape, size and function is called differentiation. Permanent tissues can be simple or complex depending upon their structure and function. Simple permanent tissues include parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma. This is a stem. Let's explore the tissue parenchyma. Parenchyma are elongated living cells with a cell wall made of cellulose. These cells are polygonal in shape and have a large central vacuole. They also have intercellular spaces between them. Parenchyma forms ground tissue in the central cortex and the peripheral pith of stems and roots. In leaves, they contain chloroplasts and are called chlorinchyma, which help in photosynthesis. 
in aquatic plants. Parenchymatous cells contain large air cavities that help in buoyancy and are called parenchyma. Parenchymatous cells in fruits and vegetables are filled with starch, which help in food storage. Let's take a look at another simple permanent tissue, the colenchyma. Colenchyma are elongated living cells with cell walls made of cellulose and pectin. These cells have little intercellular spaces. They occur in the peripheral regions of stems and leaves. Colenchyma provides mechanical support and flexibility in plants. These are sclerenchyma cells, the third type of simple permanent tissues. These are long, narrow cells with no intercellular spaces. Sclerenchyma is a dead cell with deposition of lignin in the cell wall. They occur around the vascular tissues in stems, in the veins of leaves, and in the covering of seeds and nuts. These tissues provide strength to the plant. Complex permanent tissues are made of more than one type of cells that coordinate together to perform a common function. These are of two types, namely xylem and phloem. Let's explore the different components of the xylem. Tracheides, vessels, xylem parenchyma, and xylem fibers. Tracheids are tubular dead cells. They transport water. Their cell wall is made of lignin, which provides mechanical support. Vessels are elongated dead cells that transport water and minerals. They are usually present in big trees. Xylem parenchyma cells are living and they store food. Xylem fibers are elongated dead cells with lignin that provide mechanical support. Let's now look at the different elements of phloem. Sieve tubes, companion cells, phloem parenchyma, and phloem fibers. Sieve tubes are elongated living cells. They transport sugar or food from the leaves to the stem and the roots. Companion cells help in conduction of food to sieve tubes. Phloem parenchyma store food. Phloem fiber provides mechanical support. Another type of tissue that is very important for plants is the protective tissue. They protect plants from the surroundings. Protective tissues include epidermis and cork. Epidermis is the outermost protective layer of roots, stems and leaves. It is one cell thick and covered with a waterproof layer called cuticle. The epidermis breaks at some places to form stomata. Stomata are surrounded by guard cells and help in gaseous exchange and loss of water. As the plant grows older, the outer protective tissue replaces the epidermal cells. This outermost layer in older roots and stems is called cork. Cork cells are dead and lack intercellular spaces. Cell walls are thickened by suberin, which makes them impermeable.
it takes a small brick to form a wall. It takes four walls to form a room and many rooms to form a house. Similarly, it takes tiny cells to form a tissue. It takes different tissues to form an organ and many organs to form an organism. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to Identify the different types of animal tissues. Describe the different types of epithelial tissue. Describe the different types of connective tissue. Describe the different types of muscular tissue. And Describe the components of nervous tissues. Animals move around in search of food, shelter and mates. They consume more energy compared to plants. So, unlike plants, most animal tissues are living tissues. The animal body is made up of different types of tissues epithelial tissue connective tissue muscular tissue and nervous tissue let's look at each tissue in detail epithelial tissues form a protective layer for organs they act as a barrier to keep the different body systems separate. Epithelial tissues are of different types depending on their shape and function. Let's first look at squamous epithelium. Squamous epithelium has flat and thin cells. These cells group together and do not have intercellular spaces between them. They are found in the outer layer of the skin, lining the cavities of ducts, blood vessels and the chambers of the heart and provide mechanical support. These pillar-like cells are called columnar epithelium. Columnar epithelial cells are cylindrical. They are found in the lining of the stomach and intestines and facilitate the movement of nutrients across the epithelial barrier. This is glandular epithelium. When columnar epithelial cells modify as gland cells and secrete substances at the epithelial surface, they form glandular epithelium. These are found in the sweat glands and tear glands and produce secretions. This is the lining of the respiratory tract where ciliated epithelium tissue is found. These tissues are actually columnar cells with hair-like projections called cilia. Cilia are motile and this movement pushes the mucus forward into the nasal tract to clear it. These cubical cells belong to cuboidal epithelium tissue. This tissue is found in the lining of kidney tubules, salivary glands and thyroid glands where it provides mechanical support. Stratified epithelium may have the same or different kinds of epithelial cells. 
cells line up one over the other to form stratified epithelium. It is found in places of wear and tear like the epidermis of the skin, lining of the mouth cavity and esophagus. This is a network of roads that connects different places to each other. Similarly, the animal body also has its own network of tissues that connects different organs and tissues. It is the connective tissue. Connective tissues are of different types depending on their shape and functions. Let's take a detailed look at each of them. Blood is a type of fluid connective tissue. Blood has a straw colored liquid part called plasma which contains water, proteins, salts and hormones. Blood cells suspended in the plasma include red blood corpuscles or RBCs, white blood corpuscles or WBCs and platelets. Blood flows within blood vessels and transports gases, digested food and hormones to different parts of the body. Bone is another connective tissue. Bone cells are embedded in a hard matrix composed of calcium and phosphorus compounds. It is a hard porous tissue that anchors the muscles and protects the internal organs. Take a close look at these tissues that pack and bind various organs. These are fibrous connective tissue. They include ligaments that connect two bones. Ligaments are tough and elastic and provide strength and flexibility. Tendons connect bones to the muscles. Tendons are tough and non-elastic and provide great strength and limited flexibility. Another type of connective tissue is cartilage. Cartilage has widely spaced cells suspended in a matrix of proteins and sugars. It is found in the nose, ears, rings of the trachea, and at the end of long bones to give flexibility. Take a look at these irregular shaped cells. They are areolar connective tissue that fills the space inside organs and supports them. Such tissues are found between the skin and muscles and around blood vessels and nerves. Here's a look at the adipose connective tissue. Cells of this tissue are filled with fat globules. It is found below the skin and around internal organs like kidneys and acts as an insulator. Animals can move because of the elasticity and flexibility of muscular tissues. Muscular tissues have elongated cells called muscle fibers. Muscular tissues are of three kinds. Striated muscles, unstriated muscles and cardiac muscles. Striated muscles are cylindrical, unbranched and multinucleated. Each muscle fiber 
has dark bands alternating with light bands called striations. These muscles help us move our limbs and lift weights at will. So, striated muscles are called voluntary muscles. They are found in our limbs, body wall, face and neck. See how the food is pushed down to the elementary canal by the contraction and relaxation of muscles. This process is done by unstriated muscles which are spindle shaped with one nucleus. They do not have striations and are called smooth muscles. They are also beyond our control and are called involuntary muscles. They are found in the iris of the eye, urinary bladder and bronchi of the lungs. That leaves only one type of muscle tissue, cardiac muscles. Cardiac muscles are branched cylindrical fibers with a single nucleus. The contraction and relaxation of these involuntary muscles cause heartbeats. Do you know what these boys are doing? They are trying to converse over a telephone that they have made. The function of the wire is to transmit information. Similarly, our body also has tissues that transport information from one part of the body to another. These are called nerve tissues. Let's take a closer look at nervous tissues. Nervous tissues have elongated cells called neurons. Each neuron consists of a cell body with a nucleus and cytoplasm called cyton and elongated hair-like extensions called dendrites. One of the dendrites, called axon, is very long. Neurons join end-to-end -to, -end to form nerve fibers. These nerves are richly supplied with blood. Nervous tissues are found in the brain, spinal cord and nerves. The combination of nerve and muscle tissue enables man to move rapidly in response to stimuli.